Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole of the group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the feet, at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening on the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. I don't know about you, but to me, it still feels like it's Easter Day. And our gospel leads us in that direction as well. The gospel today is similar to the lessons on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, in that we have the same readings every year. The psalm and the other lessons may change to which lectionary year we're in. We're in B this year. But the gospel stays the same, so it's kind of become part of our DNA. And yet, it is forever new. It is part of the beauty of the Bible that it speaks to us where we are, even when we're hearing the same words that we's, we've always heard. Words we heard and thought we understood from years ago suddenly come into our life as our life is today and says, this is what God is saying to you today. The Gospel of John this morning is different in some ways from the other Gospels. For example, I mentioned on Monday Thursday that John's Gospel doesn't mention the Last Supper. 
the three other Gospels do not have the story of Jesus' interaction with Thomas, although they do have very similar stories. Our Gospel today begins in the evening on the day of Jesus' resurrection, with the disciples behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. They were grieving. They were in shock. And based on what happened next, they were still having a difficult time believing the women's story of the resurrection. The first five verses today tell the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples and showing them his hands and his side. The difference between the beginning and the following verses is Thomas states what the others had probably been thinking until Jesus appeared to them. They had doubts. Although we re read this passage, read this passage from John every second Sunday of Easter, the other Gospels mention doubts as well. In Matthew, we're told that when the disciples went to Galilee, they worshipped him, but some doubted. In Mark, we're told of Mary Magdalene telling those who were weeping that Jesus appeared to her and they would not believe it. Then it appeared to two disciples who went back and told the rest, and the rest of the disciples didn't believe it. In Luke, when the women go back to tell the disciples of what they had seen and heard, these words seemed to the disciples an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Jesus again appears to two disciples who go back and tell the others that they spoke with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Also in Luke, Jesus says to all the disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. So Thomas is not alone in his doubt. However, in John, we have this specific set-apart conversation with Thomas a week after the resurrection. Taken by itself, one might think that Jesus was upset with Thomas from the sentence, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. But John goes on, these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. John is talking to us all these centuries later. We are those who are blessed as we have come to believe. We all have doubts, just as Thomas and the other disciples did. If we say we have no doubts, we are only fooling ourselves. But we love Thomas. He is the unbeliever who hides inside every believing Christian. Jesus knows we have doubts about his resurrection and so many other things in our lives. We become afraid just as they were afraid, and we always want a little more proof. Sometimes, though, we have the door locked, just as the disciples did. Our intellect says Jesus' resurrection is beyond belief and beyond the grasp of science. However, it was never our intellect that Jesus was teaching and preaching about. Our doubts come in stages depending on where we are in our lives or the lives of our families. Those hard questions of faith, which many skeptics have had before us. 
In the early church, it was doubted whether God, being eternal and divine, could die and still be God. Or is the doubt that darkness of our souls, where disbelief pushes against us and the world around us? Those times when life is tragic or violent and there seems to be no sign of a resurrected, loving Christ. Yet God is there in our fear and grief, in our anger and doubt. How are we to know when God arrives and responds to us? Will we know it's God? We are shown in the gospel today God's response to our doubt. For in our focus on Thomas and his doubt, our doubt, the real point is who Jesus is and his reaction. We are given the answer in how Jesus appears to Thomas. Jesus appears although the doors have been closed and locked out of fear. He walks directly to Thomas, seeking him out, just as he seeks us out to show us love when we are doubtful. Rather than begin by arguing his unbelief, Jesus' first words to Thomas are, Peace be with you. Jesus welcomes Thomas to put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. It is only then that Thomas realizes it is Jesus, just as the other disciples did not realize it was Jesus when he first appeared to them. Jesus is patient with us, just as he was patient then. We are not chastised as Thomas was not chastised. We can be confident in the belief that when we lack faith, Jesus will meet us wherever we are, no matter how far our heart has turned away from him, no matter our belief or unbelief. Jesus' appearance to us is certain to change over time as we change. And we may not know him in the moment, but in time we will understand. One moment God may come from behind an altar, calling us to joyously celebrate through the riches of the liturgy. Jesus may appear to us through the beauty of music or art, the next moment, God may come as a beggar on the corner, reminding us that love is at times ragged and vulnerable. Perhaps in the face of a child, or the silent warmth we are wrapped in through the hug of a friend while we weep. When God comes to us, we will recognize God's presence in the moments when peace is offered. Where in the midst of pain, we realize we are not alone, but that Jesus came to seek us out and reveal his suffering for us, and that God has been beside us all along. Amen. Let us stand as able and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Taiwan and the families and friends of those lost from the World Central Kitchen this week. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Special welcome to all who may be visiting with us today, either in person or online. We're glad to have you here. If you remember way back a week ago when this place was full, <laughs> I invited everyone to return today. I told them we had church again today at the same time, but they must have forgotten. But you didn't, so thank you all. No, they just went over there. Here. They're playing volleyball. Well, they're playing <laughs> volleyball today. That's what they're doing. Just have a couple announcements for you. Uh, remind you that formation will begin again next week, and Father James has a special class that will take place next Sunday, uh, beginning at 9.15 here in the nave, and it has a name called Eucharistic Practices. You will find it listed in your bulletin. Uh, he'll take you through some of the things that we do in the Eucharist, and you'll get to experience how that works in this space. Uh, but it will begin here uh, in the nave at 9.15. Following that, 
he and I will come up with some type of marvelous Easter program that we will continue throughout the rest of the week. So uh, I'm excited about that. Also next Sunday, the children's choir begins rehearsing again, uh, beginning at noon. They will uh, rehearse starting next Sunday through uh, Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost in May, where they will they will sing during the service. So if you have questions about that, it's for any elementary aged child, please let uh, Dr. Meyer, Paul, or Dr. Lucas know uh, if you have any questions or thoughts about that. That starts next week. Also remind you that today is the first Sunday of the month, so the healing altar will be available following communion. If you'd like any prayers, you may go to the healing altar. It's been in the bulletins, but I want to say a verbal thanks to everyone who helped with Holy Week, Palm Sunday, and all the work that goes into celebrating Easter. We greatly appreciate your assistance. Yes, we do. And also, a toiletry drive for Jewish Family Services starts this month, and that's in your bulletin as well. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate this week? Wow. Then let us say together the celebration prayer and then go straight into our prayer for the bishop search. O oh God, our times, times are, are in your hand. hand. Look, Look with, with favor, favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Creator Dear God, God giver, giver of every, every good, good gift, gift look, look graciously on us in the Diocese, diocese of West Missouri, and, and guide us as we discern our call of a new bishop. O Jesus, be present in our discernment, and lead us to a shepherd who will invite us to live out the gospel every day. O Holy Spirit, inspire us with your wisdom, and kindle our hearts with the fire of your love that we may be renewed as we prepare to welcome the ministry of our next bishop. This we ask trusting in you. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again uh, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.